Amen, Professor Lowe? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, let's talk. What are we talking about Sunday? Anybody Mastery. Want to? Mastery. Oh, yeah, we did a little bit about that mastership. Somebody please get that for me, please. Somebody. Hallelujah. So we talked about being light beings. Y'all remember? Yeah. Say being light beings. Yeah. Are you a light being? Yeah. Are you a light being? Yeah. Or are you full of darkness? Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. You been what? You been what? Hallelujah. Let's, let's recap so we can fourth cap. Y'all with me? So Genesis 1, 1 through 3, I'm not going to read all of them, but God started creating stuff. He said he started creating stuff. God started creating stuff in verse 1. 1, 1, he created heavens and the earth. Say heavens and earth. Heavens and earth. And then you get to verse 2. Between the 1 and 2, something happened. Say something happened. Something happened. Say somebody fell. Somebody fell. And then darkness came. Come on, y'all with me. You see, I understand something. When God creates something, he creates something with form. Mm. And he creates something with fruit. Mm. So it ain't going to be void and without form if he, cre if he created it, right? Oh, wow. Y'all with me? Yeah. So if he created it, it have some form. Mm. And it will have some fruit to it. It won't be void. Y'all with me? Yes. Because God, God has all things in himself. So when you deal with something void, that means it has nothing to it. It's useless. It's vanity. Wow. Ain't nothing vain about God. <laughs> All fruit is in God. Y'all with me? Oh, yes. So when God say, say a thing or birth a thing or create a thing, fruit coming forth. Yes. All things was unto himself and from himself mm. and for himself. Y'all with me? Yes. So every being, in the, every being in any dimension was for Christ. Is for a purpose in him. Mm. <laughs> he, he, he even uses darkness. Come on. He ain't got to create it, he just uses it. <laughs> Come on, Jesus. Because he can't create what he ain't got. Come on, gang. The Bible says, in him was light. And there is no darkness. at all. So he didn't create darkness, but he created a being that fell into darkness. Yeah, with me. Come on, Got perverted. Because perversion is another version of the original. So when you fall from the original version, you become something else. This is, you get what I'm talking about? So when your life is not according to the government of God, you're living perverted. I don't care how successful you became in the natural. If God ain't governing that life, it's still perverted. Oh, wow. oh Jesus. Y'all with me? We good? Ashi Anna. Oh, I said that good. Ashi Anna. Ashkash and Vigash. Come on, hallelujah. <laughs> so, so God started creating stuff, and then stuff happened between one and two, and then God had to come and recreate. He had to recreate earth before he recreated man. All of us that have been born again or born from above, we're recreated. Y'all with me? So he did the earth like that before he did you like that. So he came into darkness and brought order. Same thing he did in your life. He come into your darkness, into your frailty, into your weaknesses. Come on, y'all ain't hear me. Even when you thought you had strength, it was weakness in the devil. Come on, Dad. Y'all with me? So he will come into your darkness and bring order to that thing. Come on, hallelujah. Every place that your life is chaotic, God got order. Light brings order. Yes, God. Every confused place, God got clarity. Oh, Jesus, y'all with me here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Every ignorant place, he got wisdom. Hey. Come on, sir. Thank you, Lord. So we ain't got no excuses. Ooh. What's your excuse? <laughs> you ain't got no excuse. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God says, I tell you what, let me start recreating with the word. 
The Father worked through the Word. It was a partnership between the Father as the one who is the workman. Come on. Come He's the workman. Hallelujah. And then through the from the workman comes the word. <laughs> and out of the word, now you got the wind. Ooh, <laughs> Holy Ghost. Hey. Because you know when wind comes, wind comes to change stuff. So they partnered together. This is why the Holy Spirit was brooding. Brooding because the Holy Spirit in the, in the Hebraic context, Holy Spirit is more like a female. Mm -hmm. oh. This brooding is a female term. Oh. Brood is a hen. A mother hen broods over her egg. <laughs> to help the development of the egg come forth. So the Holy Spirit is the birther. So, why wow, y'all, are y'all hearing me? Y'all, y'all boys. Uh, no. So the word will speak Holy Spirit birth. Mm. <laughs> and this is why when you when you are in alignment with Christ, when you speak from his authority, Holy Spirit births it. On, He's still birthing it today. Come on, hallelujah. That's why you can't do this work without the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the giver of life. Come on, hallelujah. He's the giver of life. He or she, whatever you want to call him. You know, I like to call him. He, come on, hallelujah. He's the giver of life. But he just has the female type tendencies that, to, to show you that all is in God. Male and female, all that is in God when it ain't about gender. Because he's a spirit. And as a spirit, you turn into what you want to turn into. You be what you need to be when you need to be. And y'all ain't here. That's why he said, I am that I am that I am. Why? I'll be what you need me to be when you need me to be, and I'll still be God. Come on, say, I'll still be God. I'll be your kinsman redeemer and still be God. Come on, come on. I'll come in word and flesh, but still be God. Whatever you need, in the time you need it, I'll be it. See, this is why, I think, you know, the spirit of the realm is an animated realm. It's highly animated. This is why people got the imagination to draw cartoons. Come on, man. Because they get it, the imagination from the spirit world. And they turn those cartoons into anything they want to. So the spirit world can turn into whatever it wants to just to get a message to you. Wow. Oh, boy. Y'all ain't hearing me. It's all about getting something to you to make change on the earth. You're going to make change one way or another, either with light or with darkness. And the spirit world is going to turn into whatever it wants to get that message to you. To bring fear or faith. On the day of Pentecost. Y'all looking at me funny. So the Holy Spirit is brooding. Hovering, say hovering. It means vibrations are manifest. You know how you be shaking on the earth? Can you imagine that? Billions of times shaking the earth. Shaking the earth so that the earth start forming back into life. How you shake darkness out. Come on, y'all. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, anyway, whatever. So... There's this partnership between the Godhead that's forming and the earth is coming back together. He's bringing stuff out of stuff. Let the grass, let what's in the grass come forth. Let what's in the water come forth. Divide the waters, all that. All of that was already in the earth. So whatever you are on the planet to do is already in you. Holy Spirit hovers over you to bring it out what already in. That's why you need a word spoken so Holy Spirit can birth. <laughs> Bring forth what already is in you. Everything you need to walk out your path in this life is already birthed in your belly. It's already impregnated in you. That's why he gave you an incorruptible seed. He gave you his seed so your future won't be tainted. That's a tweet right there. Hallelujah. Y'all don't even tweet no one, but that was a tweet right there. 
He give you a seed, incorruptible seed, so your future won't be tainted. Because every time you move with the seed, then everything in that way gets moved out of the way by the one who protects the seed. Come on, Dad. Wow. See, God protects his investment in you. Come on, y'all with me. Oh, that's a good word. Ah, that's why he said, that's whoa, 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 whoa. This is why he said, my word won't return back to me but fruitless. That means what I put in you gon' bear fruit because I protect it. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, it's all good. And it'll come back to me useless. That's so good. Anyway, let's talk. Hallelujah. So then he says, he says, I tell you what, this is the birthday place. This is how I'm going to give life. I'm going to speak my word. And as I speak, whatever I speak is going to start materializing, right? So he said, let there be light. and light became. That's what it said. It's, it's really say light be and then light became. Come on. Or light be and then light was. Y'all with me? You got to understand this light, it, it dealt with past, present, and future. Because once he spoke it, it became past, but it was in the present, light be. And then when he said light became, it already went into your future. <laughs> Y'all thinking about that? So whatever he made has a future. I'm going to talk to you, to talk to you too. Whatever he made has a future. Because if he made you out of light, he made future. God is futuristic. He looks at you, but what he's doing is looking inside you to see generations. What do you have to pour? What kind of seeds are in you to pour into the earth so generations can benefit from it? On the day of Pentecost. Man, it's a good word. It's, it's Facebook look, talking to me. They, 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 my God, hallelujah. Whatever. <laughs> so light came alive when God spoke light. This is good. So it was a manifestation of living life. So light brought life. Light brought life. Anything you bring light to, it has to have light on it. If you stop bringing sunlight to a plant, what will happen to the plant? If, 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 if the sun shut off from the earth, what's going to happen to us? Because we need sunlight to... That's why certain places on the earth people can't live on. That's right. Places like Antarctica. That's, right. that's always frozen. Oh my God. Uh, uh, see, you gotta understand, without light, there comes frozenness. Uh, Your life freezes. Your life dies out because it's iced up. Because nothing will melt if it ain't no light that will melt it. Yes, come on. Baby. Oh my God. <laughs> so, so I don't have no heat to the ice. What happens? It stays ice. It stays frozen. That's what happens to your life when you're in darkness. That's why you get stagnant and stale and crusty. Oh. You freeze up in the spirit. Because mm. ain't no light penetrating through you to wow. melt what needs to come off you. Wow. Wow. Jesus. Anyway. So light gives life. Say light gives life. Light, 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 light gives light. Light. Then we start learning about God had to divide the light from the darkness. Y'all remember that? Yes. And he called the light what good. He said it was good, right? He didn't say anything about darkness being good. 
The Bible says that many people love their darkness rather than being in light. They love darkness, my God. But he said darkness ain't good. Come on. Why would you love to participate in what's not good? That's why he said no good thing is in your flesh. When you govern my flesh, you're in no good thing. Anyway, so he said, I'm dividing the light from the darkness. Remember what I talked about? The, the light from the darkness? Remember I said the word between. He said, I had to divide, I had to separate, I had to sanctify what was light between what was darkness. The word between mean what? Anybody remember? Ben, B-E-N, remember? All right, come on, hallelujah. These will be students, I said, hallelujah. So uh, the, the, word, uh, the word between means being. So I, I, I sanctify uh, the being of light from the being of darkness. That means I brought something out of something. I had, to, I had to go and separate something to bring something back to me. I'm light, so I brought sons of light to me so that the sons of darkness can be separated from sons of light. Y'all with me? Yeah. He was dealing with spiritual beings. Say spiritual beings. Spiritual beings. You got to understand, before you became flesh, you were spirit. So this this not just encompass the species of heaven, but it encompass the species of heaven dealing with you. Because you're a species of heaven. I'm gonna keep talking. So he had to deal with the angelic realm, he had to deal with the realm of sun, just the realm of sons. He had to deal with sons. You are a part of the sons. Uh, all of the beings, he brought it out of light. Say, out of light. Out of light. But, the, but, but there, there were, everything, came, listen, you got to understand, everything that came out of God was light, right? Even the beings that rebelled, they first started off as light. I told you, he, I told you, this was recreation. Original creation, all of the beings started off light. You with me? Until the fall. I'm going to get into that too. Y'all good with that? Yeah. All right, hallelujah. So anyway, so he had to go into chaos. He had to bring order. He had to, he had to separate sons of light from sons of darkness, right? So this is why we got the class of angels that's from, that are called holy angels. And then we got these demonic angels. So you got the hierarchy. Because God got principalities just as the devil got principalities. Y'all with me? So everything that the devil has, God has, because the devil only perverts what he sees God has. Right. This is why darkness is an antagonistic of light. It's a perversion from the original. It's a deviation from original. So what he, what the devil see God do, because he want, he's the one that I want to be like the most high. He still got that mentality. So he copies God in a perverted way. It's just like somebody looking at your life, and then they see what you do, and then they try to copy you, but they do it the other way. They do it the opposite way. They do it an antagonistic way to oppose you. Yeah. Oppose that? is an opposite. <laughs> so they do it negatively while you try to do it positively. And that's what the enemy does when it comes to God. He trying to make you think he's God, but he's not God. He's not even omnipresent. He's not omniscient. He don't know all things. He's just wise. Come on, babe. That's it. He don't even know all your thoughts. All he does is project your thoughts and then see how you move. Come, Jesus. See how you respond. Come on. God is the only one that knows your thoughts. And when you don't reason with God, though. Y'all with me here? The enemy projects thoughts so he can see how you're going to react. So he, see how you react. he studies you to see what he can get to. And then he keeps in the same spot because he knows he can get you in that spot. Oh. Come on now. He don't go to another spot. He's going to hit that spot because he knows that's your weak spot. He can only gather in what you for me. Yeah. Familiarity. I'm going to keep hitting that real case until I destroy you and break you all the way down. Until I break you down. But then it will be TK break you. Y'all with me so far? 
So that's what, you know, it's like the positive side and the negative side. The enemy looks at God how he's doing it the positive way, how he's doing it his way, and he won't, he tried to bring the negative side to everything. That's why, that's why, you know, mostly folk be talking about oh, I, uh, I, God gave me a blessing and you ain't serving God. Come on. The enemy know how to get stuff to you to keep you doing the same stuff you've been doing. Come on, y'all ain't hearing me. Don't understand how these folk go up this this uh, demonic chain that they go up in the entertainment business and all these other uh, platforms that these people got. It gets more and more perverted the higher they go. Even in the gospel industry, even in the preacher circles, it get more and more perverted. Because these gatekeepers are there trying to keep you uh, uh, from entering a door unless you go through them. Uh -huh. And the way to go through them is a perverted way. Uh -huh. Most folk want to be on these platforms, but you don't know what other folk did to compromise to get there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Some of your favorite folk compromise and get to these stages. Darkness. Perversion. Say perversion. Oh, child. Oh, oh my God. I just, I just, uh, yeah, okay. All kind of perversion happened for them to get there, to sing, to sing that perversion to you. To teach that perversion to you. And they know how to get it to you, too. Come on. They, they smart about how to get it to you. And then you start feeding on their seeds. That's why I have it for. I can't listen to you. Because you got to, I, I can't, I don't sense, hear purity. something to you because they know how to feed your emotions. Yeah. Many people know how to feed your emotions without teaching you how to be a son. Uh -huh. <laughs> so they know what to say and how to say it in the time to say it and arouse you to keep you coming back to keep hearing what they got to say. They know how to do that. They are professionals at it. So I'm not knocking how gifted they are. They're gifted. Many people are gifted but, but it's a wickedness with it. It's a wicker perversion. It's twisted. So it's gifts with no fruit.
Jesus didn't go to them. He went to the wilderness to get baptized. Notice that. Sometimes you just got to uh, allow God to help you pave your own way in this stuff. Come on, man. <laughs> and not try to get into the in crowd. Because if you because if you hear what really goes on in in crowd, you'll be wanting to be out crowd. Woo! Woo! So I'd rather have God allow me to blaze my own trail. Come on. And he start opening up doors that he think I need to be in. Come on. Not me trying to get in certain circles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and most of the time, most of the time, you could be in a place. Yeah, this is crazy, though. You could be in a, in a place where you start out so good, right? And you start out so good, you can be ready. God can put you on certain places, but. When you, you you get the again, remember I told you before, the higher you go, the more I'm just see, I'm just pouring out my heart now, y'all with me. The higher you go, the more lower you gotta be. The more humble you gotta be, right? So when it, when we get elevated, we still gotta stay low, right? And so out of the low place, God can keep speaking to you. God can keep leading you. God can keep guiding you. So you still need, the higher you go, you still need to hear the voice of God even clearer. But it means you got to stay low and not get in pride. Most people get in pride, even stop hearing God, but they know how to win a crowd. They know how, they're so gifted in teaching and singing, it's not about hearing God to get what you need. It's about getting you what they think you need or what they want you to have, and you Bite that thing like a mice and cheese. Because it's so entertaining. It sounds so good. Well, that's so that insane. My God, I got so much talent. Yeah, talent. Yokes ain't even being destroyed. Y'all don't want to hear this stuff, you, because it's truth. It's the truth. We need to hear it because at the end of the day, if you get elevated, you need to know how to handle elevation. You need to know how to handle elevation. God don't want you dirty. He don't want you getting corrupted with it. So a lot of times, a lot of people, they will get to those places, make friends with certain people in those places, stop hearing God, now, when they keep coveting, now they become like the people. Oh, wow. Wow. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. So when you wasn't greedy, you start becoming greedy. Mm -hmm. When you wasn't homosexual, you start becoming that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you wasn't a whoremonger, you start becoming that because of the crowd. You start hanging around. This is why Paul said, what did he say? Say it again. Bad character corrupts good what? Good character, good habits, good company. That's why you got to check your circles. Y'all hearing me? A blessing increase in Jesus' name. Amen. So, I'm just trying to say, you know, you're going to be put in predicaments and you're going to be put on platforms and places that, uh, you know, God will bless you to be on. He'll bless you to be around certain people, but God is trying to tell you, you got to be light when you're there. You got to be one that's not easily influenced by darkness. You got to be one of integrity. Y'all with me? Y'all paying attention? Y'all in class or y'all on something else doing something else? Y'all with me? Because darkness is a jurisdiction that has been cut off from the realm of God.
We'll get this one way or another. Because I tell you, I tell you what, you'll be challenged with very things that I'm telling you. You will be challenged with this stuff. Whether it's on a high level or a low level, you will be challenged by it. Y'all got me? Yeah. Trust me, you will be challenged by the word you hear. Anyway, glory. So darkness is a jurisdiction that has been cut off from the realm of God. Again, like I say, I believe that all beings started off as light beings when God originally created them. Because even Lucifer was a light bearer. Yeah. Y'all with me? Yeah. Yes. I'm going to get to that scripture in a minute. I'm not there yet. Go with me. Y'all with me so far? Yes. So God separated sons of light from sons of darkness. Watch Ephesians 1 and 4. The Bible said, just as he chose us, say he chose me. He chose me. So when, it's, when you say that collectively, it's us. Mm. Ain't that good? good? He's chose us in him who is light. Oh. Y'all with me? Yeah. So God chose us in light before the foundation of the world. Oh. Before anything was even laid, he already chose you in light. <laughs> Ain't that good? Yes. Why? Remember going back. See, when you sanctify, when God separated you, divided you, and, and sanctified you, he made you holy then. Mm -hmm. So you were already holy. Wow. When you came to the planet, you got ignorant of what you were in holiness. Hey. So now you're walking in darkness. Now you don't even know you have been holy. But you get, you start understanding again when you get back in light. Y'all hey. with me? Yeah. So he said, he said, I chose you in light, which is himself, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy. Jesus. So now you walk out what you were already. Hey. Ain't that good? Yeah. That we should be holy and without blame before light in love. Without blame. The reason you're without blame is because Christ's blood made you that way. You gotta understand, without blame deals with innocence. Faultless. Come on, hallelujah. Ain't that good? Guiltless. Vanessa, that means you ain't guilty no more. Come on, hallelujah. You're not guilty. You're not to blame. You're without fault right now. Innocent before God. Come on, hallelujah. I don't care what the devil stole from you. God said you're innocent. When I put you back in my life, I made you innocent. Come on, hallelujah. See, this is why you got to stay in light so you can remain blameless. Oh. Because that's why no condemnation is upon you. Say, ain't no condemnation. Ain't no that literally means there is no judgment for me. <laughs> ain't that good? Yeah. That's a lot of freedom. Yeah. See, darkness will be judged in a manner that they'll never have salvation if they remain in darkness. You won't get judged like that. So darkness gets judged as guilty. But when you are without condemnation, come on, come on, you're not judged as guilty. Yeah. The sentence says innocent. Y'all yeah. don't hear these good news. See, this is good news for folks. See, y'all just y'all like hearing that religious stuff that can keep condemning you and beating you down. Hallelujah. Yeah. God is trying to tell you, I chose you in myself in life before the foundation of the world that you should walk in the light so you should remain holy and innocent before me. Come on, y'all ain't with me. So before the foundation of the world becomes prophetic. You're walking before you're walking out before time prophecy. Oh, Jesus, come on. This is why you're ancient. Come on, hallelujah. You just went back to the ancient path and walking out something that's ancient. Come on. That's why the Bible said you're ancient doors, your everlasting gates. What God started with you.
can walk here in the earth and then he'll end with it. Come on. Because, well, because there's a circle and a cycle. It's called covenant. Come on, y'all. Somebody, is somebody up in here talking to me. Come on, hallelujah. I'm trying to wake folk up right here. I know it's getting late, but hallelujah. Watch this. This is how much the Lord loves his species that he made in his image. He has entangled, say entangled, entangled new creation sons into the Godhead. Ooh. You are entangled or interwoven into the Godhead. When you weave something into something, you become a part of what you weave wove it into. When I weave it into her, that means I become a part of her. If I weave fabric in fabric, I become a part of the fabric that came together. Oh my God. So when God put you in Christ, he was trying to tell you, I put you in light. And when he put you in light, because God, the Godhead is light, I put you in the Godhead. I'm interwoven you back into light. Come on, y'all with me here. Man, I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. <laughs> Lucifer was never in the Godhead. Matter of fact, I'm going to go here. No angel was, is, or never will be in the Godhead. Divine dance. 
It's a divine dance of union. Say union. It's called perichorosis. Say perichorosis. Say perichorosis. See, he had an interwoven union because the Godhead is an interwoven pattern. You gotta understand, they go in themselves, come out of themselves, go back in themselves, let themselves in, and they go back in. They know how to move out of the way and then get involved. But it's a harmony that never stops. Say it's a harmony. You gotta understand, there is no separation in heaven. It's all harmony in unison. The Godhead is a partnership. You see the Father, you see the Son, you see the Holy Spirit. All of them work together, all of them are equal. That's why he did the body like that. To work with one another because there's an equality with us. That's why he called you his body. He's the head. Head and body work together to get something accomplished. There's an equality. There's no separation between the body and the head. If I, if I take off my head, then the body will be dead. <laughs> so you have to have a head and a body. Right. That's why I put you in the Godhead, and that's so he can work with you with life. Mm -hmm. I came to give you my life, and you like more abundantly if we work together. Mm -hmm. Say it's a yoking. It's a yoking. Uh. Say the unison and the harmony. God put you together. Put, God put you together like an orphan orchestra. Y'all ain't hear me. He said, "I want my Holy Ghost symphony flowing." Come on. This section gonna play this way, and then this section gonna play this way, and that section, and they all all flow differently, but yet it's gonna be in harmony. That's why he hates this chord because this chord is the wrong chord. Why you don't want a chord? You play a big And then one man a bang bang. Like that Beethoven, that Beethoven ain't bait. It's just bait right there. Ain't no hope in it. Hope in it. So you add and discord. When somebody is spreading discord, God hates the sound of it. Come on, Dave. Oh, Jesus. Come on, Dave. You got a house that's flowing together, and they're flowing, and you hear, and then somebody going bad about the house, and, 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 he hates that. He despises it. You know how people do it. But then, watch this. Uh-oh. Let's go to the universal body. And, and. Anyway. So it's a pericoreso. They, they, they weave and wove it. It's like a and then a circle and, a, and they're just going and they're just moving in and out of each other. They move in each other. They move out of each other. They move with each other. They make room for each other and they just move in unison. It's a beautiful, you know, it's the same ball as, you know, we talk about the flame and sword that move every which way. That sword made up, it's like a ball, a fireball that goes every which way. You couldn't, you can't pass it no way you try to pass it. It just, mm. It's going to cover you, it's going to hit you. Mm. So God is like this sword. But it's the Godhead moving together. But then he said, you in it too. Hey. You become a part of a dance. Because mm. God choreographs, the Holy Spirit, he choreographs the dance. You follow it. <laughs> this is why, you know, when they have the dance move, they dance move going, they, they going. It's because you see it on TV be so perfect. It's because somebody choreographed it, and the people followed the pattern of the dance. God causes you to follow the pattern of the dance. That's what flowing in the spirit is. Walking in the spirit is a dance. When you move in the spirit, that dance moves. Come on, man. You, you know the word you know the word recreation mean? Yeah. But it's called recreation. Because during recreation times you have fun. Play time. 
See, heaven is so different from earth. Earth, we take everything serious. Heaven, they have joy. They actually have fun in heaven. We see people have fun. Oh, no. Heaven enjoys fun. Heaven is trying to get you to enjoy fun. Recreation. I want my people to have fun in the spirit. Because most of the time, we always see it, we get nothing done. Sure right. And we don't enjoy none of it. <laughs> but when you're in the spirit, you have fun. When you have fun, oh man, you done accomplished a whole lot. You be like, man, I've been here seven hours. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Freedom. Freedom is fun, it's recreation. It's totally backwards from this world. Because the word work, he said, remember the Bible said he finished his work. Talking about the Lord finished his work in seven days. The seven day was a day of rest. But the word rest actually means he actually celebrated what he created. When he recreated, he celebrated. He actually had some fun. Because God don't need, he don't need to sit down like you. He just choose to do it if he want to do it. He, he living energy. What does he? He don't ever get tired. Right. Well, I say he don't sleep or slumber. Living energy. That's so good. So he don't need to rest like you. That ain't the rest he's talking about. It's a, it was a celebration of what he created. The finished works of recreation. <laughs> and then heaven celebrated the finished works of the of the cross. Okay. Come on, y'all. And they ain't going to celebrate the finished works of the Holy Spirit because that's when Jesus returns. Mm. Wow. Come on. This is good. I tell you what. I tell you what. Do this. Test this out. Go to work one day. On purpose. Test it out. On purpose. On purpose. One day go. All serious. Go tight. Right. Go up tight, see it. One, just go. No, and work that day. No, the next day, test it out. Go and just, just joy. Just <laughs> laughing, having fun. <laughs> on purpose. Just have fun. And do your work. See what actually works. <laughs> because that serious time is going to turn into stress time. Yeah. And worry time. Yeah. And mad and angry time because you ain't accomplished a certain thing in the time that you all ain't Oh, you're right. But if you go enjoy, oh God. Everybody's asking. Hey! If you go and you're just smiling and you're laughing and you're playing and you're just having fun doing what you do at your job, everybody's like, my God, what has gotten into you today? Right. Well, I need what you drink. They, you know, they're worldly, so they don't say stuff like that. You must got to so you know they crying crazy stuff. So they say anything, but at the end of the day, you already know it's the Holy Ghost fire. Let that be an open door to introduce them to Jesus. Now let it be an open door, cause they gonna be worldly. Let them be worldly. That's them. But that's an open door to tell them who gave you what you have. They're gonna say perverted stuff. They're gonna cuss you out. They're gonna say all kind of stuff. But it's an open door. Why? Because they're intrigued. They're intrigued by something different because everybody here working and crabbing and trying to get the deadline in and they Everybody fighting at each other. Fighting each other. Undercutting each other. But you come on. You got heaven on. Heaven is open wide. So you come and singing and you worshiping and the glory on you and all that good stuff and you like. Right. You know what the yeah. I'm like, I got doors open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we started just telling them, well, you know, the Lord woke me up this morning. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, gotta, you just got to do it. You just got to do it because they're intrigued by what's different, what's unique. Yeah. So try it. Be practical about it. I'm telling you, you're going to see a difference. And so I would rather practice what, with what works every day. Mm -hmm. Because the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Y'all with me? Yes. 
All right, anyway, let's keep going. So say I'm in the Godhead. And the Godhead is in me. Ooh, I told you it's a perichoresis. It's a I in him and him in me. So I'm in the Godhead. The Godhead is in me. What's up, Chris? Y'all with me? So, so we're in one another. When you talk about increase in Christ, it's, a, it's all encompassed in one. You in him and him in you. You in the ocean and the ocean is in you. Jesus. Uh, perichoresis. Uh, P E R I C H O R E S I S. Hallelujah. So say you the say you the sons of the light. Sons of the light. You say, say I'm a son of light. All right, let's keep going right here. So you remember when I talked about how God wants to transmit and transfer images through you, right? Transmit and transfer. What does transmit mean, Tasha? You remember? No. Transmit means to cause something to spread. God wants to transmit his image through you. You call. You need to cut off. You should thought you may go sleep. <laughs> what you read. Transmission calls something to spread. Say spread. spread. Say transference. 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 transference causes something to move from one place to another. So transference will cause transformation. And transmission causes domination. So, so you move an image into another image, right? That's transference. So what's in you, you give away. So the image of light is in you, you give it away to somebody who needs the image of light, right? But now you don't want it to just stay with them, you want it to spread. You want it to, this is why he said make disciples. See, once they get Christ, that's the seed. Now you want to help the tree grow. And then you reproduce after that kind. He reproduced after his own kind. What kind are you? I'm light kind. I'm a God kind. I'm a God breed, God species in the earth. Come on, hallelujah. It's a, it's a, you become a projected hologram. Come on, Jesus. God projects himself as a hologram through you, image. Anyway, hallelujah. Like I said before, light does not ask darkness permission to shine. The Bible says you need to shine and let the men see your good works. This is what the Bible said. He said you're the light of the world. He said let the, let the people, let men see you shine with his good works. When you do that, you glorify the Father in heaven. So you project an image that glorifies God. What does glorify mean? Show the true nature of something. So now when I move in light, showing the works of Christ, I start showing his true nature to people. Man, y'all ain't whatever. I'm going to keep preaching to you anyway. Glory to God. I'm, I'm getting excited talking to y'all about this stuff, but this is good meat. Church, I was talking about Lucifer. Isaiah 14, 12. He said, How are, he said, How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. Say, son of the morning. Son of the morning. That means he was a son of the light at first. Okay. Morning deals with light, dawn, daybreak. Mm -hmm. Lucifer was a son of light. Um, Jesus, y'all don't get me so far. He said, you cut down to the ground. That means you've been cut down from heaven unto the earth. You who weakened the nations. That means that there were nations before God recreated stuff. There was a species before our species. There were nations in another earth. That's why the Bible said, God framed the worlds, plural. 
Not just a world, worlds. There are many planets and galaxies we know nothing about that God has created. It's just man he made in his image. Whatever species you are, I don't care. I'm a man. Come on, y'all. I'm made in the image of God. He said, you weaken the nations. So there were nations that, that uh, Lucifer fell into. Boom, weakened. You got to understand, the reason it was chaotic is because there was judgment. Judgment hit the earth. For you have said in your heart, in your what heart? I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. There had to be a certain place in heaven that Lucifer wanted to get to. That he, he didn't have access to. He said, I'll ascend there. Because he was already in heaven. Because the Bible said that that, that dragon, uh, Satan, was, he was the serpent of old. He got kicked out of heaven. It was a war in heaven. So it was, he was in heaven. Is this a place in heaven he wanted to get to himself? I will. His will. His will from his heart. Pride. He got uplifted in his heart. But he was in heaven doing the thing, covering the glory. He was a, he was a guardian cherub. But he didn't like that place. Greed. Pride. Jealousy. All that, all that manifested in him. Envy of God. Jesus, Jesus. I mean, you're a worship, you're a worship leader in heaven. The pipes coming out of you. When you open up your mouth, sounds are coming out nobody ever heard before. Jesus. Beauty like no other. <laughs> glory everywhere. Come on, y'all ain't hearing me here. And the Bible said he's full of wisdom. I mean, wise like no other. He said you had the perfect seal. Jesus. The seal of perfection. Jesus. How you going to mess that up? But he didn't have the name of God at the end of his name. His name was Lucifer. He didn't have Michael. Come on, Jesus. <laughs> Gabriel. The name of God wasn't at the end of his name. <laughs> Help. Michael means one who's like God. That's why he's the prince of Israel. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Y'all didn't hear me here. So, so Lucifer. Come on, y'all didn't hear me. He got all up in himself. He up in himself. Saying in himself. And so he said, he said, watch this. He had a throne. He had a throne. He was a priest that had sanctuaries. He was like, he was like a high priest in heaven. Yo, did you know that, Shalom? He said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. A throne. I will sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. That was a place Lucifer tried to get on his own. I will, he wanted to sit where God sit at. That was his problem. But he wasn't invited. You've been invited. Uh, when he had access denied. Hallelujah. That's what they say. Down in the shield. 
means to the lowest depths of the pit. So he didn't just stop when he got cut to the ground. He didn't stop. He kept going to the lowest pit. The anchor, Michael and the archangels threw that to him. The Bible says he was cast out of heaven. He was thrusted. It was, a, it was like a lightning blast out of heaven. And he hit the ground. Weakened the nations. Everything started having an earthquake. Everything started, you know, uh, just falling. The tectonic plates started splitting up. And now water covers the earth. He called the massive chaos. And God had to come back down and breathe something to that earth. Ain't that good? So to follow Lucifer. So this is why he said he went to the lowest of the pit. The, the pit was created for the devil and his angels. They were sent to the pit. But if you agree with them all your life, you're going to go to it. It was reserved, the lake of fire reserved. For the devil and his angels. That's the originality. But since man fall, the, the fall of man put man in the nature of the devil. And if you keep that nature all your life, you're going to go where it was reserved for them. This is why you got to be born again. You need a new nature. Your nature got to change when delegate. Say my nature gotta change. It ain't that you, it ain't that it ain't about your works. Because your righteousness is as filthy rags. It ain't about how righteous you work to be. Ooh, folks don't hear that because that's all we preach is to uh, work our righteousness. It ain't yours. It, it got to be given. Come on. You ain't only earn it though. It, it, you don't even earn it. You just receive it. Because you receive him. For those that receive him. Receive him. You don't earn this. You just get it because you received him. Ain't that good? It's his righteousness. He imputed on you. Say so he imputed that thing on me. Oh my God. I gotta, I, listen, Tosh, we ain't got to work for this. Let's impute that thing on you. It's a gift. Say it's a gift. The Bible said it's a gift of righteousness. Oh God, you, what you do for a gift, huh? Take it. Take it. Take it. I possess what's given to me when delegate. <laughs> he gonna last on that on that camera. Be quiet, sir. <laughs> so it's a, so it's two different falls. The fall of Lucifer and the fall of man. They were two different falls. I sound like I'm long, but I'm not gonna be there. Lucifer, watch this, he fell from heaven to earth, but he remained in, in an eternal state. He fell from light to darkness. Y'all with me? Yes. Y'all with me? Watch man though. Man's fall was like this, Rhonda. Man shifted dimensions. Mm. He shifted from the dimension of the spirit to the dimension of the flesh. Jesus. That's why when you get cut off from the life of God, you ain't spiritual. Jesus. You're carnal. So man went from a spirit being to a carnal being. So he shifted dimensions. He went from the fourth dimension and beyond or above to the third dimension and below. I'm going to explain that a little bit later. So he shifted from the fourth dimension and beyond to the third dimension and below. Jesus. So man also shifted from light to darkness. He fell from light to, y'all with me? Yeah. So, see you later. Y'all be good, be safe. So when we shifted dimensions, our genetics became corrupt. Jesus. You with me? Because our blood became tainted. Yeah. Oh. And we became a species of darkness now. Wow. Right? Now with me. Say species of darkness. Species. Watch this. Ephesians 5 and 8. He says, 
He says, for you were, say word, past tense. You were once darkness. Once. You ain't hear what I just said, did you? Yeah. You were once yeah. darkness. Okay. Another way to say it, you formerly existed as darkness. Woo. When you came out your mama womb, you existed as darkness. But now, say now, baby, hallelujah. Yeah. Now you are light in the Lord. Yeah. Jesus. I told you, when you in Christ, you in light. Y'all heard me. Uh-oh, he gave you instructions now. Walk as children of light. Mm. Woo! Say walk as children of light. Walk as children. Another verse says this. Live as those who are native born to the light. Native born. Native born means my origination. Oh, origination. Ah, oh, Jesus, y'all ain't hearing me here. Native born to the light. This is why you had to be born from above. Because you fell into darkness, so I had to ascend you into light. Jesus. Oh my God, y'all hearing me here. The next, see, when you native, you become a citizen of what you native of. Y'all with me here? And then once you become a citizen, I give you a language. That's why your tongue is called languages of light. Oh, I talk light. Come on. Good. Right. <laughs> native, say I'm native born. I'm native born. When you're native of, you, you have its nature. And if you have its nature, that becomes what's natural to me. Are you hear what I'm saying to you? You got to become native so it can become your nature, and then what's in your nature becomes natural. This is why darkness ain't natural to you no more. This is why sin is not natural to you. Y'all ain't hear me. This is why the works of the flesh should not be natural because you're not a native of darkness. I'm going to teach you whether you're hungry for it or not. I teach it to you anyway. Hallelujah. Teach it anyway. Hallelujah. Ephesians 5 and 10, he says, he said, try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Let your lives be constant proofs of what is most acceptable to God. Constant proof of what is most acceptable to God. This is why when you live for the Lord, you don't have to ask God his will. You become proof of his will. Oh my gosh. You prove what's good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I got to ask him his will. I prove his will. Because when I walk in light, I get to know his will. And I prove what I know. I should. So take no part in and have no fellowship with the fruitless deeds and the enterprises of darkness. Ooh, darkness got fruitless deeds. Just because it feel good, sound good, look good, all is good to you, it's fruitless. Time wasting. And many people love to waste time in their flesh. Mm. Wasting time. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You can't never redeem your time if you ain't in the spirit to redeem it. Oh. So if you stay in the flesh, you're going to keep wasting time. Mismanaging time. Oh. With fruitless, fleshly, dark deeds. He said, but instead, let your lives be in contrast or opposite to expose and reprove and convict those dark deeds. So God is saying, you ain't even got to preach to them. You got to live to them. Come on, y'all. You ain't got to say 
nothing. The gospel is in you. And, I, and you start being a living expression of the gospel as you live in light and walk from light. Come on, y'all ain't here. Yes. Your lifestyle becomes a living epistle to darkness. And now you start exposing their deeds because you show up in light. You start reproving their deeds. Uh, y'all ain't rebuking their deeds. You ain't got to rebuke it like that. You can rebuke it by living in the light. Conviction starts here. They stop coming around you because they know they, they, they've been doing stuff they ain't supposed to. And you've been living in light and they know you ain't going down for that. So they stop coming around. We ain't having it. <laughs> but then when they need you, they'll come around and they'll come to you like nigga demons in private. Oh, wow. Stop asking you for your advice in private. They don't want everybody else to know. Y'all ain't hearing me here. <laughs> they don't want everybody else to know. They're going to come to you in private. Because, uh, you know, I, I know you got what I want, but I, you know, I can't say that in front of Sally Sunil. Because Sally Sunil, you know, that's my friend, and she keep bad mouth for you anyway, but I need what you got. God will send, uh, no, right by can't shit, pay cool, pop, pie. God will send you to the folk that's been hearing bad news about you. He'll send you to the folk that's been, that, cause, cause he, he ain't going to send you to the one that's been planting the seeds. He'll send you to the one that the seeds been planted in. So they'll get to know the light themselves. So it's like, it's like Sally Sue, I'm going to give you that, Sally Sue, been speaking to Shantae. Planting seeds, Sally Sue, planting seeds of darkness about Rhonda, who's light. Right? So God sees the conversation about Rhonda, who's light. Right? So she kind of stay away from, they both stay away from you because they don't, she don't, definitely don't like you. She don't know you, but she in, you know, the fence, she on the fence, she like that. But when she has a chance... When she has a chance to come to you in private without Sally Sue being around, God will send the one that's been seeded to you so you can give them the light they need to know who you really are. Wow. Anyway, what So he said, your lifestyle should convict them. Say convict them. He said, because it is a shame even to speak or even mention the things that they practice in secret. Even the, even, even the bad talk about you is a shame. That they practice in secret. Come on, y'all ain't with me. It, it's a shame that they got to sneak away to sleep with such and such. But then, when this such and such don't work out, they come to light and ask you your opinion. Okay, what should I do? They want light's wisdom. Because they know light ain't doing what they're doing, practicing in secret. Oh, God. Y'all good so far? He said, but when anything is exposed and reproved by the light, light don't make it visible and clear. So trust me, light beings, if you compromise in, in the dark, God don't make sure what you're doing is going to become visible if you don't repent and turn away from it. Sir, he will do that. Because God will always send you warnings first before he publicly shames you. Because we think we're getting away with it because we sneak in and ain't nobody saying, you, you got God in you. What you mean nobody yeah. saying? Yeah. You a dummy. Because <laughs> you're being real ignorant right now. You don't think nobody see The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth. The eyes of the Lord are in you looking at you. Uh, 
So at the, at the end of the day, the eyes of the Lord are going to warn you because they're going to warn you through other people that you trust first. Why? Because he really don't want to openly shame you. He really wants to for you to repent on your own first. But then he'll send somebody else if you don't stop. And he wants you to repent. But then if you keep going down that way, oh, it's going to come out some kind of way. Because God know how to expose. That's like, it's like the last resort, though. Because you ain't stopping. Because when Nathan came to David, David immediately repented. That was why, that's why David, you know, didn't have this, this, this big old open shame that went on with him in that aspect because he repented. Wow. He ended up losing things. He, he still experienced loss, but it wasn't just one no massive loss because he turned from it. That's, right. that's what God wants to do in your life. He, he wants you to come out of the shadows and the dark and come into the light, live in the light. They live in the light. He said, he said, where everything is visible and clear, light did it. So he's trying to tell us to stop yoking up with people of darkness. Y'all with me? Stop yoking up with people of darkness and stop yoking up with works of darkness that are bearing no God fruit. Because the only fruit you're producing, demonic fruit, dark fruit, and flesh fruit. Get nowhere. Vanity. Useless. That stuff is not going, listen, when the judgment day of Christ hit, that stuff going to be burned up. It ain't going to last under the weight of what's, what you have done in Christ, meaning what Christ has told you to do. See, a lot of stuff we do in the name of Christ, he ain't told us to do it. That's going to be burned up. But when we do what he told us to do, that's going to stand the fire. God, I built this mega ministry for you. But did I tell you to do that? You didn't do it by the spirit. You did it by your skills. Because anybody can build a big church through administration. They ain't got to be anointed. Because as many of them that got a big church ain't anointed. But they know they got administrative skills and they surround themselves with administrative people that can promote and market and all that stuff that you need to grow something big. You can do it. Jesus, y'all don't hear this stuff, do you? The word fellowship is a supernatural yoking. It means ones that mutually belong to one another because of joint participation. So when you when you fellowship with darkness and do things with dark, you are joint participating Jesus. and you become a mutual partner. Jesus. You share in their darkness. Jesus. Oh my goodness. Lord. This is why the Bible talks about, he talks about, you know, when they say. I'm trying, I'm trying to get this out of a religious context because many people take this out of context. When he say, lay hands on a man, sir, he's not talking about the laying on the hands for healing. He's not talking about the laying on the hands for deliverance. He's not talking about the laying on the hands of how Paul said, I, I come to impart something to you. That's not what he's talking about. The laying on the hands was to affirm somebody into leadership. Jesus. That's what he's talking about. Jesus. He said, don't be quick to appoint appoint because they used to lay hands to affirm somebody in leadership. Don't be quick to appoint somebody in a leadership capacity. Why? Because if you do that and they're still in sin, you're sharing their sin. Your kid. So your hands laying on is a yoking to affirm their sin in your leadership. Mutual participation. That means I affirm you sleeping with any and everybody but still being a leader. I affirm you with your homosexual ways and still be a leader. Yeah. 
That's why you have to stop. Right? Exactly. Because it's a joint. It becomes a joint thing. Because I affirm that. That's why certain people I invite to leadership meetings. Not everybody. Why? Because everybody is not a leader. Not at this point. You can become. But right now, there's some things that need to be in order before you become. Thank you, Lord. Come on, Jesus. Because when we instead of producing flesh fruit, dark fruit, demonic fruit, God is not in that. He wants you to come out of that, join with light. And you know what I'm saying? Say join with the light. Say fellowship with the light. Hallelujah. Because it's a supernatural yoking. For John said this. If we say that we have fellowship, uh-oh, 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 uh -oh. let me put scripture on it. If we say we have fellowship with God and we walk in darkness, we lie. We lie and we don't, Marika, practice the truth. Close your legs up. Yeah, you got the spectrum of 
the seven spirits of God, every color of the spirit flowing out of you. You worry about a whole race. Get out of your arrogant self. Yeah. 
Y'all yeah. want me to finish this? Big light. Yeah. Real quick. Big old light. Big old light. So Lucifer and man, they both fail. Yeah. But the biggest difference between the two, run the setting earlier, is redemption. The biggest difference between the two falls is redemption. Say redemption. redemption. Let's go ahead and still talk about Lucifer. Ezekiel 28, 12. Now this is uh, Ezekiel. He was, he was he, he shifted into prophecy. Say prophecy. prophecy. He started seeing into the eternal dimension, and he started seeing Lucifer. God started speaking through Ezekiel about Lucifer, and he says, "You, Lucifer, were the seal of perfection. You were full of wisdom, and you were perfect in your beauty." You're talking about vanity. You're vain, very vain. All up in himself. That's why Jesus didn't come in the form of all beauty. He had to come in the form they weren't attracted to him with because he came the lowest. Because Lucifer was at his highest and he failed. Jesus came in the low in the lowest and got ascended. Jesus. Oh God, y'all don't have me. Good God. This is so good to me. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Lucifer was already in Eden. That's why when Adam got placed in the garden, the serpent was already there. That's why he said, subdue on the earth. Because there is a rebel in the garden. There is an opposer in the garden. You got to subdue him. God was warning it. So he said, you were in the garden, in the garden of God. See, Lucifer used to walk through the garden and the mountains of God through the fiery storms. Wow. He had the ability to do that because he was a priest. Wow. You know, the high priest was the only one that could walk a certain path. This is how Lucifer was. He, he was the only one we see can walk the fiery stone. Mm. Well, he was on the mountain of God. He was in the garden of God. Watch this, though. This is the part I want to get to. Every precious stone was your covering. That's how beautiful he was. He was covered with every precious stone. Jesus. But you got to see what man was covered with. Crowned with glory and honor. The word honor means kingly ornaments. So man had skin like Glory dust. Ooh, Jesus. All kind of shades of jewels was on man. He was adorned like a bride. <laughs> and then he gonna re-adorn us like a bride, y'all. Oh, oh, anyway, I like talking about this stuff. Every precious stone was your covering, Lucifer. The Sardius, count with me when I say the names, okay? The Sardius. The topaz. Yeah. The diamond. The barrel, Four. the onyx, Five. the jasper, Six. the sapphire, Seven. the turquoise, Eight. and the emerald. Nine. With gold, but that don't count gold. But it was with gold. That's why you, when your skin shines with gold dust, mm. he covered you with glory and honor. <gasps> So you're getting your original skin when you start showing up with gold dust. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Glory dust. Mm -hmm. All the, the sprinkle that have the different colors pop Ooh. out of you. He's giving you original skin. Oh my, original. Oh my God. It was dust. When, they, when man was made out of dust, it was dust that was recreated by God. It was heaven's dust. But when man fell, he got earth's dust. Because everything started decaying and dying. You shifted dimensions. Uh, Stripped you of glory and honor. Uh, that's why man, that's why I say everybody has sinned and fallen short of the glory. glory. You've fallen from that dimension. Uh, and then Christ come to put you back. I come put sons back into glory. I sent you back to that dimension. Teach me something. <laughs> so it was how many, how many jewels was it? Nine. Nine jewels. He said, the workmanship of your timbrels and your pipes. Whoa. In 
instruments was prepared for you on the day you were created. Oh, God, he was a walking marching band. Can sing when he lift up his voice. I mean, a whole band playing out of him. He said, you were the anointed cherub who covers. Lucifer was anointed. He didn't lose it. It got corrupted. That's why people have that kind of corruption to do what they do now. But you got to understand, he was anointed because he had to, he had priestly duties. Also, he was a cherub that covers, just like you see over the Ark of the Covenant. Those cherubs who have those long wings that cover the mercy seat. Covered the throne. The mercy seat was considered a throne. But it was a judgment seat before Christ poured his blood on it. When he poured the blood on it, it became mercy. Anyway, he said, I, God said, I establish you, Lucifer. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created until, when delegate, until inequity was found in you. Oh, I mean, he made him perfect. Living perfection. Everything you saw about Lucifer was perfect. You will want this being like, oh my God, everybody will be attracted to this being. This is why he dragged one third angels with him. He was that influential. One third plus Lucifer were rebellious against God. <sighs> Inequity was found in him. Jesus. That's bad, Ed. That's bad. Yeah. All right, watch this. Let me go to watch this. So that was Ezekiel 28. This is Exodus 28. Have you noticed the 28 pattern? The 28, you see it? This is Exodus 28. He's talking about the high priest. He said, you shall make the breastplate of judgment. When Lucifer fell, there was judgment. Sin was judgment. Say sin or judgment. Artistically woven, according to the workmanship of the ephod, you shall make it. A gold, purple, blue, and scarlet thread and fine woven linen, you shall make it. It shall be doubled into a square. A span shall be its length, a span shall be its width. You shall put and set stones in it, four rows of stones. How many did you count with Lucifer? Nine. Nine. That means there were three rows. When we get to the high priest, he said, you're going to make four rows. Can you count with me? The first row shall be a sardius, One. a topaz, Two. an emerald. Three. Uh, second row shall be a turquoise, Four. a sapphire, Five. and a diamond. Six. Third row shall be a jacinth, Seven. and a gate, Eight. and an amethyst. Nine. Fourth row shall be a barrel, Ten. an onyx, Eleven. and a jasper. Twelve. They shall all be set in gold settings. How many? Watch this. Lucifer had every jewel except the third row. Jesus! Oh! He go back. The third row was a, a Jesse and a, got, a, a, and a gate and an amethyst. Lucifer didn't have those three. He had every other stone except those three. He didn't have the third row. What was that? Uh, I'm going to spell it. J-A-C-I-N-T-H and A-G-A-T-E. J-A-C-I-N-T-H and A-G-A-T-E. So Lucifer did not have the third row. If you work in threes, that's the Godhead. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God had threes. He just had three rows. But God, God gave the high priest, man, four rows. 
See, Lucifer had nine stones, high priest had 12 stones. Nine Hebraically symbolized judgment caused by turning away from God. So he, God, you know, God is so wise and he, I mean, everything he does is strategic and he has foreknowledge. He already knows his heart, but yet he gave him a chance. Jesus. Just like you, he give you, he knows what you're going to do, but he gave you free will anyway to do it. So everything he does is prophetic. Even your name is prophetic. Yeah. 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 So even the stones of nine were prophetic of Lucifer's heart turning away from God. Jesus. Jesus. Wow. <laughs> and then he said, I'm going to put on man a breastplate oh, by kata, by soto, of judgment because Lucifer's judgment came upon man called sin. So I'm going to put a breastplate of judgment and I'm going to put 12 stones on that. Wow. I'm going to put 12 stones. I'm going to put a whole nother row. I'm going to put three more. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to cover it all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Because 12 is the establishment of a perfect order, which can only come about as a result of divine intervention. Jesus. That's what 12 means. When, he said, I had to divinely intervene. I had to come and give perfect order now to judgment. Because Lucifer's priesthood got messed up. Inequity was found in him. He turned away from me. So through redemption. So what does we have to deal with? Redemption. redemption. Through redemption, the Lord had to form another priesthood that pointed the way to a perfected priesthood that will last for eternity. So Lucifer lost his priesthood. He had to come in the earth and set up another priesthood that was just prophetic to the order of Melchizedek, which lasts forever. Jesus, this is good teaching. If you look at 1 Peter 2 and 9, the Bible says you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. Come on, hallelujah. You are a holy nation. And you are God's own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into God's marvelous light. Yeah. Woo! So let me break this down to you. You are a, say me. Me. You are a generation of light. So that, that means my genetics are full of light. Jesus. I'm not darkness no more. My genetics ain't dark no more. My genetics is full of light now. Thank you. Woo! That's why I can. That's why I can help birth a generation that's full of light too. See, when you got genetics, you can reproduce. Because there's regeneration. That's why he regene you. Because it had to be a regeneration called a generation of light. Come on, y'all ain't hear me. <laughs> Chosen generation. He had to regenerate folk. You need a new generator for your house. Why do you need a new generator for your house? Because your house lights went out. So I had to get a generator to turn the lights back on. to give you a regenesis so you can reproduce your genesis. <laughs> genesis, genetics, generation. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying to you. Generators. All of this speaks to God regening you. The monogenesis is, it was God. Jesus was the super gene of God, the Father. He was the monogenesis. He was the begotten, the monogenesis, the monogene. He was the only super gene that was in the earth. Now we're in that super gene. Now we we are products of a super gene. 
So we'll reproduce out of his production. This is good news, ain't it, man? Yeah. Is this good? Yeah. Say I'm a generation of light. I'm a, generation. I'm a priesthood of light. I'm a nation of light. Now you know I owe my nation. You didn't put it on your nation of light. <laughs> you got a holy, you a holy nation now. <laughs> on my nation. It's on my nation. On my nation, full of light. I'm a light being. Say, I'm a people of light. I'm a people of light. When he talking about called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, it means you are translated into the dimension of light so that we can come. Watch, oh, this is good. He said, I translated you, uh, 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 Ty. He said, I translated you into the dimension of light so that you can come into the condition of light. So, <laughs> so I translated you in the spirit mm -hmm. so that on the earth your condition can line up with who you are in the spirit. Wow. Mm. So the condition of light is how I am in light. Okay, okay, okay. That means that means literally this. When I'm walking with God who's light, because I'm in him already, who's light, and he's put me in light. That when I walk with God, I don't have confusion, I got clarity. When I'm walking with God, I'm not depressed, I got joy. When I'm walking with God, because you can't say you love, you, you can't say you uh, walk in light and you hate your brother. Jesus. Or your sister. Y'all ain't hear me. So, so he's saying when you're walking in light, you love folk. So when I'm walking in light, I don't fellowship with darkness, but I'm fellowshipping with light. Yes. Yes. Because the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all sin when I'm fellowshipping in light. Why? Because the blood of Jesus is liquid light. Yes, it's liquid light that cleanses you. So, so I'm walking in light and cleansed by liquid light. Uh, I'm gonna run up in this street. Stitch up here. Blood is liquid light. Liquid light. Liquid light. Huh? So it's light that congeals into a substance called blood. And blood is liquid. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Because your blood came from God. Anyway. Because I told you, if you're in spirit, you can change into any form you want. Then I said, so light becomes blood. Liquid glory. Liquid. Liquid word. The word became flesh. <laughs> so let me land this plane for y'all. Get me somewhere else. Y'all keep talking. So let me land it. The fallen angels. They were made sons of God by way of spirit only. You getting that? Mm -hmm. So they were made, remember, Lucifer was son of the morning, the other ones were sons too. Throughout the world you see him calling angels sons of God. They had sonship, but it was by spirit only. Because God is spirit and he made sons like himself, spirits. Just like you were spirit, but there's something extra with you. The fallen angels were made sons of God. I'm talking about the two different falls. The, the fallen angels were made sons of God by way of spirit only. Angels, watch this. Well, I'm going to go here first, then I'm going to say it. Man was made sons of God by way of spirit and blood. Because the light is in the blood. Life of the flesh is in the blood. 
So you can't exist without blood on earth. Oh my God. So you are sons of God in both dimensions. In spirit and by blood. He my dad. He's my dad. If, if you stick me and ask me who my daddy is, it's going to say, Father God. I'm going to be like, yeah, I'll be praying, Father God, Father God. <laughs> when there you land on them. <laughs> Father God, Father God. <laughs> we got to say that. We got to say DNA. We went to more COVID and God accepted me. Lord Povich. What's his name? Father God, Father <laughs> Maury Povich. They go to the show and then, you know, they both take these you tests. Are you are father. the father. I you know. know what that is. You're not the father. But God said, I'm, I am your father. Hey, hey. I'm your father. <laughs> so, so, so he made us, you got to understand, you were created before you were made. Oh, that's good. You were created out of him as spirit, and you were made from dust as his blood. Because when he breathed in you, blood came into you. Liquid light was breathed into you. Blood started forming. The life of your flesh, you become a living species. Talking spirit just like your pet. <laughs> so we're, because of spirit and blood, we're sons. And redemption is only legal when blood is sacrificed. Angels couldn't be redeemed because they ain't got no blood. So when they fell, that was it for them. No redemption for them because it's only legal when blood is sacrificed. No blood, no redemption. Last scripture, and this is what I'm going to tie it up in. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Ephesians 1 and 7. In Christ, who is in light, in him, we, watch this, what did it say? In him, we have redemption through his blood. How did redemption come? Through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. See, you gotta understand why blood. First of all, you have to have blood to live on earth. Yeah. yeah. This is why animals got blood. Mm -hmm. Humans got blood, right? Mm -hmm. You got these little insects you crush, blood come out. Yes. So and all, of them got, all of them got some type of blood in it. Y'all with me? Yeah. When, when God made you, when the word Adam is A and D A M. A Aleph, which means father or alpha, father. D A M means blood. So when he made Adam, he made the father's blood. <laughs> oh my goodness. And when he breathed into Adam, he breathed blood. Inside of Adam's blood was all of us. Because if you take one cell in your body, you can make a whole person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So all of us was in Adam. And we were in Adam before Adam fell. Ooh. Right? So we were all part of the Father's blood. Jesus. But when Adam fell, because we're in Adam, oh. we fell. Every generation is after it's all Adam fault. You know that. Every gen every generation, you gonna, when you get to heaven, you're gonna just be ready to beat Adam down, man. Hallelujah. Every generation that came after Adam, they fell too. 
because it was tainted and fallen in the blood. And this is why Jesus had to regene you, give you new DNA, give you his blood so that you won't be fallen no more. So it's all about the blood. Matter of fact, when God breathed, watch this, Maritha. When God breathed blood into Adam, blood is what tested Adam. Inside of Adam's name, the number 40. 40 means tested. So when Adam's, when God's blood went in Adam, the testing started. He didn't pass the test. You with me? So now, since he didn't pass the test, the same thing he tested man with blood, he redeemed man with blood. Hey. So Jesus had to go through 40 days of testing to pass the test that Adam didn't pass. Father, bless your people. You're good to, I'm good to feed you. 